In this tutorial, we're going to investigate the theory behind data compression techniques or perceptual encoding and the range of codecs that are available in the Sonox Pro codec plugin and which ones are best for which job. The first thing we need to look at is whether we are going to use lossy compression or lossless. There's two ways to reduce file size. We can either do it with a lossless technique or a lossy technique. So lossless compression, we can look at one of the two lossless compression techniques that are available within the Sonox Pro Codec plugin. And the thing about the lossless compression technique is effectively nothing is discarded. So you can see that the difference signal has gone away completely because there is nothing being discarded. So there is no difference signal. And if we take a look at the comp tab, you can see the different ratios of bitrate compression. And with the lossless, the HDAAC codec, the, which is a lossless codec, there is a compression ratio of about two to one. And that's about as good as it gets with a lossless compression technique. There are various ways of data processing it, but they only produce a reduction in file size of about a half. So if you need to make files smaller than that, then you do need to use a lossy codec to achieve it. Now these codecs, and obviously the MP3 codec is a classic example of that, these codecs do this by using models or algorithms that take advantage of the way our hearing works, so that the data discarded is only the data we wouldn't have heard anyway. So let me give you an example. Music contains lots of different elements, and not all of them are audible at the same time. For example, if a flute was playing in the background behind a loud trumpet part, we may not be able to hear the flute part. It may be masked or hidden by the trumpet. So the way perceptually encoding works is that the sounds that are clearly audible are encoded in detail, but the sounds that are less clear are encoded in less detail, and some sounds won't be encoded at all and discarded. So it is a flexible process using models that are based on how our hearing works. Now these models were originally developed by the Fraunhofer Institute, who are partners with Sonox in this plugin. And these models came from a desire to transmit better quality phone calls. However, with improved phone line quality, the team moved on to looking at music. Now the MP3 format was formulated by the Motion Picture Experts Group, MPEG for short. And together with the Fraunhofer team, they continued to develop both real-time and file-based versions, which culminated in the MP3 format being formalized in the early 1990s. Now the AAC format was another lossy compression system that was developed by a number of companies including Fraunhofer and Dolby Labs and this became a recognized standard in 1997. It built upon the concepts used in MP3 compression and so it's possible to get a better quality sound for the same file size or smaller files for the same perceived quality. So in this case if we took the MP3 format 128 kilobits and compare that with the AAC format at the same data rate, we will get a perceived better quality output from the AAC format than the MP3. However, if we took the AAC and reduced the bit rate by an amount, then we could get a smaller file size from the AAC format than the MP3 format for the same perceived quality. And of course, all of these things we can check from within the Pro Codec plugin. So there are two lossless compression formats built into the Pro Codec plugin. The first is this one, the HDAAC format, and then the second one is an HD version of the MP3 codec. So we have the option of using either of these lossless compression formats, but they're not just a lossless compression format. They have a little trick up their sleeve. It's possible to embed in them an encoded lossy compression format so that if the device that is playing them cannot support the lossless version, it will play the lossy version instead. So a neat little trick that's actually sort of tucked under the hood of the lossless compression format. 
So what are the codecs that are available within the Sonox Pro codec plugin? Well, we start obviously with the ubiquitous MP3 format, and we can see that we can change the bitrate from 96 kilobits to 320 kilobits. Obviously, the 320 kilobit version will produce a much larger file, but obviously less data is discarded, so the quality will be improved. So let's just put that back to the sort of standard 128. And of course, the MP3 format needs no real introduction. It's been in common usage and is a pretty well standard format for carting around music in a data compressed world. Then, of course, we come across the AAC format. Now, the AAC LC format, the LC stands for low complexity. This is the one that is used predominantly in the iTunes Music Store. This is the version of the codec that you will get when you download music from iTunes. And so again, this is something that we want to pay a lot of attention to in the music production process because so many more of our end users will be listening to our carefully crafted tracks in this format. So again, within this plugin, we now have the ability to do that encoding ourselves as engineers and check the quality and make sure that everything is as we would like it to be. So we have the AAC LC format. Then moving on, we have two HE formats. So we have the HE AAC format and HE stands for high efficiency. So this was the first high efficiency AAC codec and is often used in internet radio digital radio, internet streaming, where we need good quality audio with very low bit rates. And then there is another version of the HE format. This is the HE format AAC version two. And this enables us to get even better quality for lower bit rates. So this is being used in DAB and internet streaming to mobile devices. So we can get down to very low bit rates you can see that the range of bit rates for this codec is 18 kilobits up to 56 kilobits per second. Whereas if we go to our friend the MP3, our range is from 96 kilobits up to 320. So you can see that each of these plugins has a different role, has a different range of bit rates, and the Pro Codec plugin enables us to produce all of these different formats simultaneously and enables us to check and make sure that we're happy with the encoding quality, the bit rates, and that we aren't overloading the codecs. So that hopefully has given you an insight into the different types of codecs that we have at our disposal within the Pro Codec plugin and why we might choose to use each one. I'll see you in the next video.